Hi guys, Dave here for Dave Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be waterproofing my cotton canvas poncho. This also uh, doubles up as a one-man shelter. Uh, this is East European, it's Hungarian, and it's called a Zelt Barn or a Lavu. Uh, I originally was going to be waterproofing my haversack, but it's the middle of winter here, even though it doesn't actually look like it by the way I'm dressed, but it is winter here and it's very wet. And the haversack isn't really a priority. I carry this with me a lot when I'm out in the bush, so it's a really priority to get this fellow here done. This is the product I'm using. It's a waterproof compound that I've made in my in a previous video, so you can check that out. And I've got about 600 mils. So a liter or a thousand mils is about a quart. So this is 600 mils, so it's roughly equivalent to about half a quart of product. Uh, let's see. These are the items I'm going to be using. So I've got a rag for uh, applying it and rubbing it into the fabric. Got another rag for wiping off the excess and a hair dryer for heating, heating it up so it will soak in. Another option to apply it is with paint brushes. I can heat this up and dip the paint brush in and then spread it over like spread it over the poncho like that but I think it's going to take quite some time to do that. I think it's going to be much quicker and much easier just using the rag so I won't be using the paint brushes tonight. Get rid of those. I'm doing it inside my house, so if it sounds like I'm in a cave, I am in a little bit. It's a bit of a small room at the back of my house. Uh, it's just too miserable outside. It's chopping and changing all the time. Windy, sunny, rainy, and that's uh, quite common here in New Zealand. So at least here I've got a controlled environment. Cool. So let's get started. This is the Zeltbahn set up as a poncho. Won't win any fashion awards in Eastern Europe, but it's very functional. And this is the hood. This grommet here just sits on top of your head and the rest of it pulls over the top. Just pull the pull tabs and you got a hood. You can have a peak on it if you like or you know you can have it set back. It's really quite good. Now I haven't done this before and I'm not sure how much of the waterproofer I've got it's going to take to waterproof this garment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here at the hood and work my way down the head, uh, across the shoulders and then hopefully have enough to completely finish the garment. So here's one of the tubs of wax. So again it's just a mi mixture of beeswax, boiled linseed oil and turpentine. As I said, bear with me, this is the first time I've done it. <laughs> This will darken the fabric. So the grommet is aluminium and it's got uh, a leather, I guess a leather reinforcing around it, very thick leather on both sides. Um, this waterproofing wax is good for leather or cotton. Might even be able to use it for wood too, I've heard, I'm not too sure. But it's just, you know, again, a mixture of beeswax can soak in pretty much anything. So leather or cotton. Um, so just I can just put it anywhere I like on this, I don't have to worry. So I would have uh, talked about it in my other video if you want to check that out on making the waterproofer. But just how it works, it's a mixture of linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, beeswax and turpentine. Now, the beeswax is the main waterproofer, but the boiled linseed oil also adds a little bit of waterproofing and helps with penetration as well to get deeper into the fabric. The turpentine helps the, uh, helps the beeswax penetrate deep into the fabric, but then again, it has a, another use. The turpentine will help dry up the oily residue that you get left from the linseed oil and the waxy residue that you can get left from the beeswax. Turpentine helps dry that up so that you end up with just with a nice dry fabric that's not oily or waxy when you touch it. So, let's get the hair dryer on. Hair dryer on high. A heat gun, I think you have it on low or medium. Hair dryer, you need high. Pretty good. That's dry. It's 
here's the untouched side. I haven't heated this side yet. And I can feel the waxy oiliness of it. And this is just soaked right in, and it's just dry. Here we can see the difference. Here's the sew line, and up above it is has been waxed and heated, and um, you can see the difference as to where it hasn't been touched yet. So, yeah, it's looking good. It's darkened it a little bit, but it's actually made it look uh, look much better. I think one thing I've realized already is I was trying to rub it in deep into the fabric, and it was taking me a long time. Um, now I'm just going to apply it, give it a bit of a rub, get it into the gaps and the little folds where the fabric folds over itself and is sewing. So I'll put some extra attention into there, but I think the rest of it I'm just going to quickly rub it on and then let the uh, hair dryer do its job of actually heating it up and, and, and letting it soak into the fabric. the excess, the, uh, the bits of waxy areas that are still shining. That just shows me that area is saturated and the wax won't soak in anymore, so I just wipe that off. seams, wherever there's any sewing, and you know, wherever there's any thread, whether it's repairs or seams, anything like that, really working in well, because you got, it usually means there you've got extra thick material. Well, here it is, the finished product. It's not oily at all, so the turpentine's done its job. Um, I've noticed since waxing it, it has all these little scratches turn up on it, and it's not damage to the fabric. I think it's just the wax itself just shows the scratches. Um, but again, it's not damaging the fabric at all, not affecting it. Um, yeah, it's come out quite good. Big thing, let's test it. Let's see, uh, see how waterproof it is. I started at the hood. So, let's do that. Yeah, pretty good. Just beads right off. Onto me. <laughs> it's doing good. It's not soaking in at all. What do we got there? Looks like it might be soaking in there. Let's take a look. No, dry as a bone. So very pleased with that, very pleased. Try a little bit more, give it a good test. Let's see if it'll hold water. Not allow it to soak in. make a little cup there. Yeah, it's holding water right there. Don't know if you can see it with that camera angle there, but it's holding it right in there. I'll give it about a five minute test and I'll come back. Here's our little uh, standing test. It, I was going to test it for five minutes, it's actually been 20. Uh, it started raining and I had to do things with the camera, so it's been 20 minutes. I don't know if you can see the pool of water there. Uh, so let's see what we got. Let's tip her out. Oh, that looks alright. And check the inside. 
Oh, okay, yeah. A little bit of soak through, just there and there. Probably, uh, I would say this whole area was full of um, water, but only it soaked through on two spots. Yeah, just those two spots there. So I would say it's more my uneven application of the wax. So I may put on a second coat. Well, overall, pretty successful results. This is nicely waterproofed, and I carry it with me almost every time I go out in the field. So now I've got a fully functional garment. I'm really pleased with that. How much did it use? In the end, I had three of these containers, roughly uh, three and plus this little bit here. So roughly about 200 grams in each container, and I ended up using one container. So I still got two containers left, plus this little bit that's in here. So I've got quite a few other items I can do. Biggest lesson learned, I think, was I spent a lot of time trying to rub that wax into the fabric. You don't need to. Just apply it over the top and then let the heat gun and the hair, or the hair dryer do its job. So, very, very pleased. It's turned out very well. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like what you see, uh, please subscribe. And please drop any comments or any ideas that you have, uh, that you've tried, any other techniques uh, in the comments down below and I try to answer every comment when I can. So see you on the next video.